secret friends unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 115. I'm your host, Todd Oxtra, and this is your guide to all that's good to nerd about. I'm joined by Lisa Goodman. Hi. Lisa, you're recovering from Dave and Buster's? I'm rather slap happy today, can you tell? Well, you're recovering from Dave and Buster's, right? I'm recovering from a week from hell, so today I'm really guessing that I will be here for comic relief. Nice. Because... <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little bananas after the week I've had. It's been nuts, but yes, I'm recovering from a fun-filled day of wrangling three boys at Dave and Buster's. Oh my goodness! Mm. Oh my goodness! Yikes. Came home and had to like, you know, get out of the hazmat suit and decontaminate. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Yikes. Also joined by Kelly Harden. What's up, y'all? Bazang! Hot take. Sorry, I, had to get that in there. I was waiting for the hot take. Oh my goodness! Uh, and uh, lastly, our Nintendo guru, Bobby Pauls. How you doing, Bobby? What is up, everybody? How you guys doing? How you doing? Good, good. Um, this is uh, what number three for me. I think. Yep. I, yeah, I've been here for three times, and I got messaged like a month and a half ago by Todd, telling me I need you to come on. Th- the Wonder Woman spoiler cast episode because I need a DC fan to defend me. So I, I stepped up and I was like, anytime, anytime I'm here. So should be fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Should Bobby, be. Bobby has uh, been on the podcast uh, several times and uh, yes. typically we talk about video games. But this one's not a, not a video game one. Focus, yeah. but we will talk about a little bit about video games. Ah, as long as we okay. can invite him back, we'll have Charlie go away for a day. And we'll have yeah, Bobby come back because anybody yeah, who's a Nintendo guru is good by me. Yeah, there we go. We're, we're a now very we're Nintendo talking. household here. Now we're talking. Yeah, That's Lisa cool. balances I, me out. Then we need to get Todd out of here too because he's. <laughs> we'll bring Todd's son in. I'm totally down with that. And, and we'll get rid of. The, and it's perfect because. <laughs> well, you know, in that case, I got a better idea. We will have a podcast that will be Bobby, Lisa, my son Jackson, and uh, Todd's son uh, Logan. Am so I you got answer? Two, and yeah, oh yeah. So then you're out too. So Bobby and the three kids. <laughs> there you go. That'll work. Well, Ash is like a Nintendo historian. He knows everything under the sun. So he and, 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 and Bobby would get along like two people. And, and, and my son as well. So that would be that would be quite a show. Mm-hmm. And and anytime Todd gets a little out of line in in the, any of our Facebook groups, <laughs> I tell him, could you please step away from the keyboard and let Logan come up and talk for us because he's the true Nintendo fan in my house, and you're just bashing for, in the, for the sake of bashing. And then the, yeah, it kind of rains yeah. Todd in a little bit. That's what he says about me with DC. He says I bash them just to bash <laughs> them, which right. is not true, yeah. by the way. Well, I, I well, we'll see today. The, uh, the non ten dad. Bobby. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, we are very excited for this because this is our Wonder Woman spoiler cast. So that will be uh, the later part of the show. But uh, before we get into that, we're going to talk about the rumors and news with Madam Web. We'll uh, talk about what we're excited about in the Geek Easy, and then we'll do the spoiler cast at the end. Uh, but without further delay, Madam Web, take it away. Now it's time for Madam Web's rumors and news. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Madam Web. It is hot out there, so be careful. Uh, I know you usually have about three heat strokes a year. Uh, don't make it a fourth this summer. So be careful, hydrate, put on a suntan lotion. She's recovering from Matt um, junk dialing her the other night. Oh my! Oh God. man! <laughs> yeah, it was. Get, get, I think the, the ringing of the phone gave her heart palpitations. Drunk texting. Were you aware yeah. of that, Bobby? That Matthew Keel uh, secretly pines for Madam Web. I know that Matthew Keel secretly pines for everybody when he's drunk. So <laughs> he's he's drunk texting me on more than one occasion. Except and me, he never like, drunk texts me, which makes me feel pretty like horrible, he's like, right? He's like Bobby, Bobby, what are you wearing? <laughs> he does. He does. <laughs> you know, Bobby, you know where that came from? That became from Charlie creating a host chat. Yes. And that's where it yes. all originated. So you can thank yep. him for that. I know. I know. And me and Matt have been best friends ever since. Oh, it's been awesome. Yeah. Oh, he's a delight. 
Yes, bringing people together, it's what we do. All right. Well, uh, we kick off uh, the movie with uh, the news with the movies this week, and, and just a sad story. And hopefully, maybe there's a uh, you know a little bit of uh, uh, I guess silver lining in this cloud was that uh, news came about that uh, Zack Snyder's daughter committed suicide. I had no clue about this. It was. Yeah. I mean, this news was very quiet, and he apparently did not want to really focus on that. He wanted to. He thought work. Focusing on work would get him through this, as some people do. Yeah. You know, you go through a tragedy, people manage that tragedy in different ways, and he thought he could work through it, and he realized he couldn't. He wasn't strong enough on his own to manage this, and he was doing the right thing for his family. He's stepping away from his work to focus on his family and his family's health. So um, prayers go definitely go out for him and his family. That's a that's a tragedy. I'm a, I'm a parent. Charlie, you are. Lisa, you are. I mean, you want your children to outlive you. And when that happens, that just that's just horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. My heart mention. broke when I read it, and you know, I give him a lot of credit because he tried to keep it out of the media at first. Yeah. yeah. And I think that he made the decision to bring it forward so that he could step away. And I don't think there's a person you know who follows any geek news who doesn't agree with his decision, yeah. who doesn't support what he's doing. It's just terrible. No, and 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 it's and it's interesting because as this came out. Um, Apparently, Joss Whedon had already been working um, with Zack Snyder because he had been brought in for Batgirl because he's going to direct that. But he had been brought in by uh, Zack Snyder to help with some uh, additional photography um, and some work on Justice League. And I didn't know that. So I did not know he was actually putting his little uh, stamp to help out uh, Zack Snyder. And uh, so because of that, that's why we're getting the news that uh, Joss Whedon is going to help uh, with some additional filming and some additional help to make sure Justice League uh, comes out on time and and still matches the vision of what Zack Snyder wanted. But with uh, just basically Joss Whedon has been a script doctor through, you know, previously, and he's come in and he has a special touch, especially with group uh, movies. Yeah. that this is this is good news in regards to the health of this movie, and and Josh Snyder, Snyder can step away and not have to worry about this movie coming out, and, yeah. you know, being a train wreck. Right. right. So yeah. let's just say I love Joss, but this is obviously not the way I would want him to no. launch yeah. the project. No, no. But yeah, I mean, it's being left in good hands, and we can all, yeah. I'm sure, agree on that. Yeah, and I think Bobby, you're the biggest fan of. I would call it the Zack Snyder DC Universe films. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I mean, I'm a fan of Man of Steel. I'm a fan of. Um, Batman vs Superman. I did enjoy those movies. I know a lot of people are not big on them, but I like what I did like about Zach was I always felt that he kind of tried to stick to the to the source material as strongly as possible. Um, and and when I say source material, he goes deep. It's not like what we know now in terms of where he goes. He goes back and gets good stuff and, and pulls it forward. Um, and that to me was what I liked about him because I always felt like. In most comic book movies, previous to this whole revitalization, after Nolan kicked it off, um, they didn't do that. They they kind of did whatever they wanted to do, and that's what I liked about Zach. So when I read this originally, it was just like he steps away, and I, there wasn't the whole. I was reading tweets, and it was more or less like you know, goodbye, Zach. You know, Zack Snyder, we wish you well. And I'm like, what the hell happened? I thought DC fired him. And I was like freaking out. And then when I read every, then I started reading more, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is horrible. This is just tragic." And then hearing Josh is gonna gonna come in was was good. You know, I feel like what he did with the original Avengers was spot on. Like it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was full disclosure. I was more of a fan of the first Avengers than the second Avengers. Oh, okay. and I felt like he nailed it with the first Avengers, and that's when they had the cuffs off. They let him just do what he wanted to do. The second film, he was complaining a lot where Marvel was kind of stepping in and making him kind of push a certain direction. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with this, because I feel like Joss, with, with Jeff Johns and all these guys, they'll, they'll make good stuff moving forward, and, and it'll be... It's in good hands, I feel. And that makes me feel good. Yeah, and, and I, I was a huge fan of Man of Steel. Uh, the end, mm-hmm. I think we talked about this, I think yeah. it was, that was the controversial part. I don't think a lot of people really hated how he portrayed you know, a young boy, an alien, dealing with these powers and the relationship he had with his mother and his father. Yeah. I thought it was really, was really sweet and special. We hadn't had that yeah. since the you know, Glenn Ford 
playing yeah. his father in the oh. 70s movie. Classic. Classic. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I'm wishing for the best. I, I, I hope uh, Zack Snyder comes through this and he can focus on just, you know, the important things in life and maybe focus on some different types of films when he comes back, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, moving on to games, and Bobby, if, for those who don't know, Bobby is the Nintendo guru. Uh, he start, <laughs> Bobby, you started off as YouTube-focused, and you weren't mm-hmm. doing podcasting. Um, you and I met yeah. through the Nintendo va- uh, voice chat group, um, and we basically at first was very uh, at odds in our friendship. We, 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 we hated each other at the beginning, That's and true. we yeah, argue we, all the time. Did you really? <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, we were no. we would we would attack each other daily, daily, and then one day I was just like, "This is stupid," and I think I I think I might have messaged you and apologized and said, "Look, any t- if I've ever said anything out of line, I apologize for it." Um, you know, I'm I'm just passionate about this, and 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 Todd said, "Look, I'm coming from a good place too," and we we mended fences and we've been friends ever since, and it's you know. We, I don't think, I don't think it was hate. I think it was just like, just frustration. I and, and it was insane, boiling. I think is, is the biggest thing. I still think you're insane. That's true. But, <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't know if that's, that's really, a, that's a pretty popular opinion. Well, like I said, yeah. if for, I could become for, friends for, with for Bobby, for God, conclusion. If I could become friends with Bobby Pauls and Frank Clark, holy yeah. cow, you know, yeah, world peace that is possible. A, and me and Frank were always attacking you. I know. <laughs> I know. Me and, would, me and Frank would message each other on the side, like, do you believe this idiot? What's he talking about? <laughs> and, just, and then we would just barrage you. Like, or I would message him, Todd again. He's killing me. Frank, oh, let me go see what he's saying. He'd go over and we'd start laughing. But no, nah, we're, we, we're good ever since. Yeah. It, it, and it's even great. funny because Frank Clark does the same thing when, when a certain someone in the Nintendo voice chat group goes crazy, too. Frank will... You it message me and say I can't believe yeah. he's doing this. So it's kind yeah, of funny. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. Full circle, but uh, yeah, so nice. Bobby uh, started off with YouTube. Did a lot of YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. You're doing some crazy stuff. I love your your tour of your Batman. Uh, basically, your collection. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Bobby's a huge fan. It's all it's all put away now. It's what? all put away. Yes, everything's gone, man. The only thing I have, I'll show you. I'll, I'll give you a little little glimpse. The only thing I have is oh, that my Joker statue. Oh, yeah, and I have a couple other pieces. I got my. My uh, Holy Trinity, my my sideshow, big Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. Then I have like Joker sideshow pieces and stuff. I kept my favorite pieces out. I've kind of converted the whole room a little bit. So, yeah, but yeah, bits. yeah. Keep, keep keep the best bits. Yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah, and then Bobby, you then went on and started the Geek Cast. Uh, mm-hmm. Yep, and then you then started another podcast uh if we ran nintendo so yeah uh, you're kind of full circle and i know right now i've been giving you some feedback you've been asking for some pe- feedback on the geek cast so i will give you i will give you an exclusive at the end of the show how about all that right. I'll give you, when, when you when you ask me about all my stuff i'll tell you where we're going with all that stuff well, that's fantastic. so Woo. so so when bobby is on i have to talk about nintendo because that's his his, his wheelhouse he, he he likes other systems but nintendo is his main focus yeah. and he is a guru yeah. because he knows the history he's got a lot of cool memorabilia um and yeah. he's done a lot of great uh gaming interviews with a lot of uh indie devs uh that are yeah. out there so um yeah love to have bobby on so really bobby the news that you know i'm gonna ask you about I know. and lisa I know. will have a, a couple of thoughts on this as well charlie maybe as well what oh, oh I, i'm still here <laughs> yeah. Well, it was announced that Nintendo, well, first things first, Nintendo has delayed, uh, officially delayed its uh, online service that you pay for until 2018. Mm-hmm. So that was the first yeah. big news we got in regards from officially from Nintendo, because Nintendo yeah. hasn't talked about the other pieces yet. Yeah, nothing, yeah. yeah. So the good news is, though, they did reveal the price, and the price yeah. is fantastic. You can't oh, it's super amazing. reasonable, right? Yeah, yeah. 20 bucks a year? I mean, that's... That's like, insane. That's like a buck. 75 a month. Yeah, it's, that's nothing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's great. We all, we all know I can't math. So. No. Not, <laughs> math, <laughs> math bad. <laughs> Money good. We know math yes. well. Yeah, so with that, and then they were kind of a little bit vague in some of the other things they said, because originally when they talked about this, uh, this, this membership, that you would get some classic games with added online play. And they mm-hmm. talked, and specifically, they talked to Super Mario Brothers Three, Balloon Fight, and Doctor Mario. Yeah. Now, if they can get anybody to want to play Balloon Fight, 
more power to him. <laughs> exactly. that's, that's a bad game. That's a bad, bad game. Okay, but I, I love Doctor Mario. Yeah, Doctor Mario, and and the fact he'd be able to play online is is the, the catch. That's the, that's the catch. The that caveat there right. all. I mean, a lot of these games, I don't think the edit online will probably be co-op like a Super Mario Bros. It'll probably be like leaderboards, don't you think? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Possibly. What are you going to do co-op with Super Mario Bros. 3? You'd have but, to change um, the game, right? I mean, really? Yeah, it, it would have to really change the game, more or less. But I think the, the idea, that was the original concept. The idea was we're going to have online functionality, all these games and that. And now it sounds they're kind of shifting their direction a little bit. And hopefully... If, if the play, and I think this is a lot to do with the delay. Sounds like it might be going a Netflix style, um, which if that's the case, that would be pretty awesome. Um, at least that's the rumor at the moment. Is it's the way they're gonna they're gonna kind of do like Game Pass with Xbox that type of thing. So what we would get, what how much we would get, and all that is kind of up in the air. Um, but let's hope that for the best. It would be pretty awesome if that happens. Yeah, I think someone's dubbed this Netflix. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember who said makes that. Sense. I don't know, but it makes sense. <laughs> and okay, maybe, Bobby's got Lucas and Ness behind him. I see him. Yes, yes. Right, right <laughs> oh my god, there. Lisa's got good yeah. eyes. Oh my god, yeah. I can see blurs. <laughs> oh my god, my eyes are bad. Uh, it's because they're part robot. You know that. that I'm true. Mostly cyborg at this part. Yeah. This one, point. <laughs> one thing I don't know if they're going to do this with Bobby on 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 PlayStation Plus. When you have it, your sub accounts all have access to online, so I can have yes. up to six users like myself and my son you know yeah. i could add five more if i wanted to and we yeah. all get access to online and things like that do you think nintendo's gonna do that because right now the switch really you have one account and then well there's some accounts of, to it but there, that, there is there is some accounts okay. on it i think i think the sub accounts will get access i think where the problem is is if you have multiple switches you're not going to be able to move that back and forth which kind of makes sense to some degree um like i have a switch and my wife has a switch I don't see the ability for me to take my stuff onto hers or hers onto mine. Um, but if she was to create a sub account on mine and I create a sub account on hers, then I could get whatever's on hers and she can get whatever's on mine, that type of thing. But I, I can't see them saying it's $20 per sub account. That would be insanity. But then again, Nintendo is very good at insanity, so it's a possibility. Who knows? But I hope not. That would be bad. But I, I think wouldn't that would think so just because it's more family-focused, but... Mm -hmm. Hopefully they'll use, like, the family share model that Apple yeah. uses. Yeah, that would be kind of good. Yeah, from what we've right. heard, uh, basically, if you want to access your content on another device, apparently you have to sign out completely, and then you don't have access to those games until you go to your other system and log in and do all that. Well, then that would make sense. But, yeah. but the thing, yeah. too, is, like, they've, they've had, they, they have kid accounts now. They've mm -hmm. done that, where... You know, you can create an account for your for your children. That might be the thing where, okay, here's mom, here's dad. They have the account. They're paying the twenty dollars a month, and these are the kids that are tied to mom and dad. So when they log in, they would potentially be able to, to do what they got to do too. So right, just like that. family share. Yeah, that would work. They yeah. need to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think for twenty bucks, and if you get a, even one game a month, I'm fine with that because it's like it's not it's. It's not a lot of expense, so I'm fine with one game mm. that you get a month. And apparently, they're they're changing their tune. They're basically saying mm. that you don't lose access to a game the next month as long as you subscribe, which I think is fantastic. Why not? Yeah, yeah, that's good. And I've heard which would be yeah, which would be good. Yeah, yeah. And I've even heard that they're saying basically this isn't going to replace the virtual console. Basically, yeah. the virtual console will still exist, and basically, you will probably more premium games. Yeah. Will be only you know will not be the free games you get every month. Those yeah, will be like yeah. the the and if they do SNES like you get uh, a link to the past things like that. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, the the other so this is the good news. <laughs> is it is it Todd? Is it <laughs> yeah? <laughs> the good news, Bobby. The, yeah. the the news that's a little wonky right now, yeah. and I and I'm very, trying to stay little, positive. A little, it's a lot wonky. I, I'm trying to stay positive, but the problem is when Nin Nintendo doesn't speak. It creates a void, and then yeah. something always happens. Well, one of those things yep. that happens is Hori comes yeah. in and drops. Here's the official Splatoon headset, Splatoon yeah. headset mm -hmm. in Japan, and then they have to show a diagram on how this thing actually will do voice chat and in-game uh, audio with yeah, your right. device on the go. And 
you have to, for for this, Charlie. I'm not sure if you're aware of this. For Nintendo's uh, voice chat and their online service, there's going to be an app, and that app will basically be right. the primary yeah. source and you for talk, voice chat. You, you talked about most consoles hardwire in chat, and the Switch yeah. did not. So yeah. this is this is their solution, and it just sounds like why? Well, why does it? Why, it has why, a why dongle. Yeah. It has a dongle. Well, <laughs> nice I have a dongle. I just want to say dongle. Dong- yeah, I have a dongle too, but you don't see me <laughs> whipping it out. <laughs> uh? oh my God, does it look uh, like a squid? Seriously, oh, would you like to have been in the pitch meeting for that like little um, <laughs> the- the two cables and the thing? It intentionally looks like a squid. Am I wrong? Yeah. Nope, that's exactly right, Lisa. Somebody, is, is, somebody is. sat down in a meeting and said, let's make this cumbersome piece of crap <laughs> that looks like a squid and yeah. charge money for it. And, and, you, and you know what? Who is buying it? All of y'all. Squid dongle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm, I won't buy this. Um, buy I'm it. not. I, can, I feel like this. I feel like this isn't Nintendo's. In my in my gut, I don't think this is Nintendo's solution. I don't think Nintendo's solution is going to be much better. But this is a third party. That, that's putting this out there. So I feel like Nintendo screwed up because they didn't get ahead of this. They had to know this was coming through the pipeline. They had to know that this was going to get announced at some point. Um, but Nintendo should have got ahead of this. And I, I also realized that like Nintendo wasn't ready to announce one portion of their online. They wanted to do it all together in a package. That got screwed up. And the, the answer to that is... I feel like we found out the pricing on the online and all that. That came to shut people up about yep. the voice chat. It yep. came to, to, to because they knew they were under fire. I don't like the way it's set up. I think if it was a wireless system, if it was something that I could plug into my Switch, because to me, this is a handheld option. This mm-hmm. works very good yep. if you're playing handheld mode. What do I do when I'm playing on my TV? I have a wire across the living room, and it, it's just, it asks for trouble, especially if you have kids. Everybody knows. I mean, I remember playing my NES as a, as a kid, and my brother would run across and get his foot put on the controller <laughs> and yank the, ki- yeah, yank the controller out of my hands. And so it's it's you're asking for trouble when you're trying to do voice chat this way. Ultimately, it would be nice if they had like a wireless feeder that would like you plug in at the at the dock, and then it throws over. It would be even nicer if they had something that you could plug into the pro controller, but. I don't know. I think we'll find out as time goes on. But this is this is a hot mess, man. They they really dropped the ball with this, in my mind. Yeah, and I hope Bobby. Maybe we'll get this, maybe we'll get some. Maybe there's hope that Nintendo will say, "This is your on the go option." But yeah. in your home space, where you most likely have the ability to charge the switch with a cable and a wall, yeah. you don't have to worry about Bluetooth you know, draining your system because you can charge it in there. Um, Because most people are going to play online at home. Local Wi-Fi at your hotel or McDonald's sucks. So, they've been doing the global test fire, or global test punch with with, with, uh, arms. I'm going to go messed up. Um, And myself and Sean Capri have been playing it a lot during these Mm -hmm. times. And the the option we've been playing is, I take my cell phone on on the so at my desk, I have a TV here, right? On the back side is a little chair that I sit in. So I would put the phone on the back side. We would Skype each other, video chat, and I'd have the phone perched up, and I would be playing on the TV. I prefer that more than anything Nintendo's going to offer me. I'll be honest with you. The fact that I can look over and see Sean there playing at the same time, it just adds to the element. It's kind of like a more of a couch co-op option than just voice chat. Sure. I would prefer that. So... I really don't see myself using Nintendo's chat option at all, honestly. Unless it's above and beyond and blows everything out of the water, which, let's be honest, it's not going to. So, for me, I just think I'm going to stick with Skype at the moment, and, and we'll see how it goes, how it moves forward. But I'm not a fan of what they're doing and, and the way they're going. I think they're making a big mistake. Yeah, and I, and I, I mean, I don't know if you remember the original PS3. It did not have party <clears throat> chat baked in. 
because the yeah. system's architecture was not designed for it. Yes. So they couldn't add it. So maybe that's yeah. why the Switch, they just figured that that's something the Switch is just not going to be capable of um, because of the way the system resources are. Nintendo's not an online company. That's why they have yeah. DNA. Uh, yeah. and, that's, and DNA is a mobile company, so that's why they're taking that uh, standpoint. But uh, one thing I did want to call out, and Lisa, this speaks to you and me because we both have younger children. Um, the fact that Nintendo requires a mobile device of some sort, tablet or something, to be able to speak uh, on the device kind of sucks because my son doesn't have a phone. I don't let him use my tablet, and my and, and that's a barrier to entry because Nintendo is a younger focused company, and uh, I bet that at least 20% to 30 or 40% of their users are going to be under the age of 13 and may not have a smartphone. So I think that's a big miss because my son is right now playing on PS4 with his buddies. He's chatting. It's easy to do. But I'm not going to give him my tablet that he might break or step on just to tap with his buddies. I think that's a big miss. So they need a, a solution. Yeah. For that. Oh, Todd, you're how talking could you? So you're cruel. talking to the wrong yeah, about that yeah. all her kids have phones. They have all. Uh, they all probably have iPhone sevens and, oh and all that. Bobby, don't make me uh, We were going to be best friends over Nintendo. <laughs> now, now we hate each other. Now so, it's going to be. Now it's going to be Nintendo. <laughs> That's be what besties. I said. I'm so sad. Um, no, I have 19 devices accessing the internet in my house. Oh, my God. oldest son, who is 14, does indeed have a uh, iPhone. It is not an iPhone 7, Bobby. Um, <laughs> my youngest son had an old leftover iPhone that didn't have phone service that he used pretty much as like an iPod, but um, he shattered it, of course. Which we do. do. <laughs> my, well, my, now it was a leftover, my, it's okay, but my we My have... can't, can't own any piece of technology he doesn't destroy. And he's, we well, have what, 16, three, 17? 17. Mm -hmm. Three iPads in my house. Um, She's set, Todd. She don't know what your complaints are. She's good to go. I'm going to call her Grandma Moneybags from now on. <laughs> yeah, right. No, that's not... First of all, it's not just me. It's grandparents spoiling. That, that's but, true. Um, yeah. It's not an issue in my house, is my point. I mean, when I built my house a couple years ago, I was more concerned with making sure there were Ethernet ports in every room than I was concerned about things like tile and carpet. <laughs> So you're talking sense. to the wrong person. See, yeah. I, I know children, and children break and lose things. That's why I don't want to give yep. anything to my son, because it's just an opportunity for another thing to get broken. Or Just because you were a horrible kid doesn't yeah. mean right. you got to be harsh with yourself. No, come on, I'm, I'm, Bobby. I, I, got, I got Todd's back on this one. I get sick of seeing kids being careless and wrecking shit. I'm just, yeah. I'm not for it. I'm with Todd. If he, so when I, I, okay. if he wants Crusher to spend of joy. on his own, that's perfectly fine. When I was a kid, I... When it came to my electronics, my Nintendo stuff, honestly, I tell a story to uh, Sean Capri. When I got my Super Nintendo, my mom didn't want to buy it for me because we had to, you know, we got the NES a few years prior, and we had a whole big thing. And I went in, I took her in my room, like, come with me, and I'm like, look at how I keep everything. I take care of my stuff. Me you, too. I promise dude. you, I will not me break too. anything. It'll be pristine and all that. That convinced her to buy it for me. Now, my brother. If he would have pitched that, it would never have worked. Because he Whirling, destroyed everything, you know? Whirling so. dervish of destruction. Oh, yes. 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 So, I, I, I have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it's my you younger son. It sounds like it's just you, Lisa, falling downstairs and shit. You're trying to destroy your own body. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I just fell down my own stairs well, twice in eight weeks. We don't call her Grandma Cyborg for no reason. She's been replaced. Right. You know, her body parts have been replaced multiple times. Yeah, Lisa, yeah. as we age, I think you're going to be the one with the most robot parts. I just get the feeling. I think I've already hit that point, haven't I? I, I don't know. That, that, that sound, that's pretty personal. <laughs> I'm not going to take I'm, Yeah, at this point. But do, do, do. I, I will anyway. I will, yeah, so I, I'm I'm really interested to see what they say. I don't know if Bobby and I don't know if E3 they're going to finally lay this out. We know the app is coming probably yeah. before Splatoon two, uh, yeah. but uh, they don't have to really do anything different until they start charging because quite honestly, they can say it's free. Yeah, it's, you, you get what you pay for. We're still trying stuff out. We're still trying yep. to figure it all out. You know. Exactly. Just keep in mind that henceforth I'm referring to that thing as the squid dongle. <laughs> dongle, dongle, dongle. Nice. Dongle, hey, you want to see my squid dongle? Oh my goodness. Oh, good God. Yes. Buy me a couple of drinks first. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that wraps up the news this week. Uh, but Charlie, I hear the yacht rock playing, so let's get into Ooh. the geek easy. Let's do it. I've been waiting. 
This is Yacht Rock. A smooth rock classics from the 70s and 80s. Yacht Rock. Album out now. Sitting in the geeky seat. Yacht Rock's playing. Kenny Loggins has us in the danger zone. We're ready do, 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 to talk do, do, about do, do, what we're excited do, do, about do. in the world of nerd. Bobby, what has got you excited this week? Man, um, I you know I, I watched the uh, the Flash finale mm-hmm. last week and and what? our what? What? finale. Spo- spoiler I'm not going to spoil anything. We're, we're way, spoil anything. way behind. Way That's behind. That's fine. I'm not going to spoil anything. Trust me. I, I I'm way ahead of you on this. Um, but I really I have to say like I feel like Flash is probably one of the best comic book television shows that's going right now um i think because they don't take themselves way too seriously and they kind of fall on to what's going on in comics and and i love it i really love everything about that show and i think they did a hell of a job this season there is some stuff um i'm not gonna spoil anything but there is some stuff that just made me scratch my head and i was just like how but we could talk about that another time when when you guys are when Charlie's caught up. I'll, I would like to talk to you about Charlie, but I I feel like this is good stuff. I really like where, where it's going, um, and I'm I was excited for Wonder Woman. Now that I've seen it, I'm even more excited for the future of DC and where it's heading. So that's kind of what I'm pumped up about at the moment. Bobby, did you watch? Uh, do you watch any of the other uh, CW hero shows? Yeah, I watch Arrow. Um, I Watched a good portion of Supergirl this year, but I'm not done. I'm still I'm still going through that. Legends of Tomorrow kind of lost me a little bit. Um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of eh. I got you. I'm not a fan of time travel stuff because, and that's kind of shocks me with Flash and why I I'm surprised I stick to Flash because I always feel like time travel is BS because you can always do one stupid thing and wipe out a whole season. You know I. I loved Heroes when Heroes was on. Oh, original. God, Heroes. And poor poor season, Heroes. That, that first show. season was phenomenal. Second right. season was so good. And you're sitting there, you're so invested. And then Hero does something stupid at the end of the season that wipes out everything bad that happened. And it was like, come on, man. It's like the whole who shot JR or the whole. Yeah, it's, then it's, it's like, or when, 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 when Bobby died in, in Dallas and, and Pamela and wakes Charles. up and it was all a dream. And I'm like, come on, dude. Really? It's like a cheap. Out, and I hate that stuff. Well, Easy it's, plot device. It's a cla- <laughs> it's a classic uh, trope in all of sci-fi. Uh, I'll talk in a little while about some Star Trek stuff. But watched an episode just this morning, which it was an exceptional episode. But it was a total Bobby in the shower scene at the end. Yeah. Something something changed with the timeline, and then it never happened. Yeah, still a good that. story, but <clears throat> it's gone. Yeah, it sucks. Even, it even sucks. when time travel is done well, like Back to the Future, uh, Terminator yeah. Two. Doctor Who. Doctor Who. There's Doctor there's Who. All, if you try to put, you know, common sense against it, it's like yeah. what? What? Yeah, that makes sense. And, and that happens, and, and that's probably my way. part. That's probably my part that messes me up with Flash this year. Um, it's just because I'm like, this don't make sense because of the time travel stuff. Um, but otherwise, I haven't really been able to to sink my teeth into. I love all the characters that are in Legends of Tomorrow. I love them all, but I just you know. I don't know. It's I hear ya. It's all. It, it's kind of upside down with yeah. that time travel. Like, stuff. They finally got a good villain this season versus yeah. Vandal Savage, who was that was that was bad. Vandal, like, I didn't they, mind Vandal Savage so much, but it was getting annoying for yeah. a while. There. Vandal Vandal Suckage. Yeah. Yes. Vandal Savage. Oh, wow. Savage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lisa. What are you uh, nerding out about this week? At the moment, I'm just so happy that I'm not working at this exact moment. I couldn't even get excited about anything this week because I literally, <laughs> I drove, I think I drove 400 miles this week. Oh, just like Lord. Just work meetings. It was just a crazy week. So I'm just happy to be here and to be awake and to not be like drinking my stress away. And oh, um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm still riding high on my thoughts about Wonder Woman, which we'll get oh. to. Good, good, So, good. Um, I'm still feeling really good that that movie got made. Totes. I have lots to say about that, and I'm bursting at the seams. So, oh that's goodness. what I'm excited about. Oh, my yes. goodness. So, okay, well, I guess we don't want to uh, wait. So, you time really time. didn't need me this week, Todd. I can leave, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's you're, all Lisa. You're, 
You're you're the you're you're the. Oh, super- don't get ahead of yourself. You don't know what yeah. to say. That's true. You're, she's she might end up turning you into the superfluous third nipple. Oh, oh lord. Jesus. <laughs> oh, is this yeah. Puerto Rico? <laughs> exactly. Or or mall rats. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, actually, that one. that line the 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 actual spoken superfluous third nipple line is about Krusty the Clown. Yes. Yes. Little well, Simpsons for you. Yes. Uh, Charlie, what do you got? Um, everybody knows, uh, who follows me that I have three, I have three corners to my fandom triangle. I have the Marvel comics, I have the star Wars, but the top of the triangle will always be star Trek. My favorite thing. And I go in cycles. I go between the three summertime seems to invariably be a star Trek one. I don't know why, but it is, but I am full on right now, but I have a partner in crime. I have my wife, April. Watching shows for the first time. You know, last time I was talking about Deep Space Nine. Now we're watching Enterprise. A lot of people like to crap on this show because it was the franchise killer. It was the first uh, show since the original series that got canceled because of low ratings and lack of interest. Yeah. Is it hard Is it hard to love? Not for me because I watched it all the way through. But parts of it are kind of trying. I will admit there are episodes that I'm like, do 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 looking at my phone. Here's a skippable one. But April's very much, I want to watch the whole thing. I want to watch the whole picture. And she's really into it. She's digging it. She says, it's very different. They don't know what they're doing. They're out there screwing things up. And I, I enjoy watching it. So seasons one and two, yeah. season three is this nice, long, unbroken storyline. We're three quarters of the way through that. And then season four is total gold. So we have kind of forsaken the DVR and we've just been watching that and loving it. Absolutely loving it. So, so Charlie, I've got a question. Oh, Lisa, yes. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, he said it's not hard for him to love. I was going to say, to be fair, is it hard for him to love anything? Like, again, slutty eyeballs. Really? Well, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in particular really not that fond of you right now. Oh. That doesn't surprise me. You've never been fond of me. See, Bobby, oh. you know how earlier you were saying that you and Todd started out hating each other and then yeah, you became yeah. friends? Charlie yeah. and I are the opposite. We really liked each other in the beginning, and now we're mortal enemies. Oh, yeah, it usually works that way with me and most women. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You have a track record, Charlie. Really. I do. I do. And me and most men. So really. <laughs> oh, look at that! At least, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So anyway, Charlie okay. beat me in the numbers. Though. But my question, back, you, back to Todd's is, question, is, is, please. Is uh, you always talk about how April's watching things that you want her to watch. What are you watching that April wants you to watch? Probably nothing. I, you know, I've, I, I, uh, when we first got Where's together, the give and take? yeah, yeah, well, for three, four years ago, I watched just about every Stephen King movie that was ever made. Because that's her real passion. Um, and there's some gems and there's some stinkers, very much like episodes of Star Trek. Yeah. Okay. You know, and yeah, I mean, there, there are things that come along. She she does, you know what? She's great. She doesn't ask a lot and she takes a lot. So she's amazing. Charlie, let me ask you a question. I'm a very blessed man. Yes, sir. I, because I, I am too a big Star Trek fan, but I tend to lean more towards the original cast. Um, I understand. So and with the reboot, I followed all that, and I got, and I loved the first one. Second one was meh. How did you like Beyond? Because I haven't seen Beyond yet. Meh. Beyond, let, let me tell you this, and I've talked about it before. First one came out, like parts of the story, the inconsistencies killed me. Yeah. Second one, total pile of shit. Couldn't yeah. stand it. Third one, I got to a point where I had to let go, and I've talked about this on the podcast. I had to let go of my, but it's inconsistent. Yeah. And I listened to April tell me, well, it's the butterfly effect and blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. It's funny. At least you'll appreciate this. Had the exact same conversation with Sunil when he was here the other day. Uh, talked about the butterfly effect in Star Trek. And I'm like, eh. So right before Beyond came out, which was basically this time last year, I finally let the, 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 the Kelvin timeline or the JJ verse into my heart. Went yeah. out and saw Beyond. Best of the three, absolutely yeah. terrific. Check it out. I'm gonna check it out. I yeah, yeah, know. please. Go. Yeah, I, I liked yeah. it too. I thought it had it was the most like a Star Trek movie than the yeah. rest had been. Yeah, yeah. right. And I am not. Admittedly, I uh, I buck the current trend that is very pro TOS, the original story. I'm not that fond of the original three seasons of the show. I came into the show in the '80s when I was a t- uh, kid, like all of us, uh, with the movies. I think the first movie i saw was probably star trek 4 and i went backwards from there and then and what very intently watched the rest of them so i love that uh original series movie era when they're a little bit older the 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 sets aren't as corny the ships are beautiful like that that 1701a ship is my favorite space vehicle any sci-fi 
nothing will ever beat it. I absolutely adore that design. I, um, I used to always get told stories when I was a kid that my grandmother used to go bowling with my mom in a league on a couple of nights a week, and she would come over to pick my mom up, and my dad would be sitting there with me and him, and we'd have TV dinners, and we'd be watching the second rerun. Like, they would always air the first show, and then half an hour later be the second, same exact episode that just aired on one of the channels. I don't know. Yeah. And I would be reciting the lines word for word on the second version of it, and she would let, and that's how I got my Star Trek. So I was real little watching the original series. Mm-hmm. Not the first time through, obviously, and um, and then when the movies came out, I just me and my dad would go to every single one together, and I just loved them. I, I I really did. So I mean, I owe my love of Star Trek to my parent. My parents got divorced when I was quite young, but they both discovered the original series when they met at CMU in the late '60s, and so they both had separate loves for Star Trek that my mom fostered. It was always on TV 50 in Detroit, like from when mm -hmm. I was real little, because this was, you know, the early 80s, so it had been in syndication for about a decade, which is how that show found its strength and how we got the films and how we then got the yeah. series. Um, but my dad really loved The Next Generation, which came on, and uh, it's the 30th anniversary of that show this fall, so it came out in the fall wow. of 87. Um, and he loved it, and we would visit, my dad lived in Detroit, we live over here in Grand Rapids, about two and a half hour drive so we would visit about once a month we would always end up watching that week's tng because he loved it and wanted to watch it with us so that fostered that love and um it's it's the thing that i love the most in all of fandom nothing will ever change oh look at this okay so i keep silent and respectful when you guys are slapping about nintendo i got Axel over here lisa Lisa, kiss my ass. Wake up. <laughs> Charlie, you never, my you never ass. made snoring noises when we talked about a video game session. Seriously, oh, you check out every time oh I talk God. about games. I apologize. Oh, I shouldn't oh, have okay. asked the question. My, my apologies. <laughs> you know oh. what? Everybody, one, two, three, kiss my ass. Thank you very much. I didn't do anything. I'm <laughs> Pucker up, buttercup. Bobby is innocent. Okay. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, it goes without saying, Star Trek is, there, is, is, is at the top of my shelf. Anything you're ever looking to know, looking for an opinion, want some place to start, I'm the guy you want to talk to. Yeah. Hands yeah. down. Star Trek is Charlie's nerd boner, yeah. is what he's trying yes. to Charlie, say. Charlie is I, the Star Trek guru, for sure. I am I am here for you if you have Star Trek questions. Okay. Yes. Bobby, yes. Bobby, we should we should talk more. We should talk yes, more. Yes, we will. Yes, yes. Don't do it, Bobby. Uh, for, me, <laughs> <laughs> for me this week, I did finish up all of the CW shows, and quite surprisingly, I actually did watch the Arrow finale, because uh, I had fallen off Arrow at the show. Just I kind of felt like it jumped the shark a long time ago. And, the, and fear, fear, I don't watch that, so Todd, feel free to yeah, spoil uh, on. You know, the I mean, Oliver and Felicity thing just got so boring. I, I kind of felt like they... It. Yeah, and so... But they kind of brought things back this episode, yes, so. and I thought it was a big improvement and hopefully what this means is um and charlie if you're not going to watch it then basically no no go on this is kind of the end of the the, the original five-year track of oliver yeah. on the island and all of these pieces and i think we're finally we finally got to the end of how he went from being on the island and and finding his mom so his mom could find he was you know actually alive yeah and this ended all of the flashbacks so hopefully we're done with the flashbacks no yeah. longer and we can move on, start a new chapter, and get better. I think they need to kill half the cast still. I mean, yeah. But. I was excited when they brought Wild Dog on this year. That was, really? I was I'm a huge see, but I'm a huge fan of Wild Dog. I read Wild Dog. I have all really? four issues of the original wow. Wild Dog series. I loved him. That he never gets any love. And when I saw him on the show, I freaked out, man. I was like, this is amazing. The character is well, different you, than the comic you, and all that, but I it, liked it. Can I tell you something hilarious? I'm aware of that character, and you know, want to know why? DC's Star Trek series from the 80s. I remember the ads, and I'm like, wow, oh. dog, what the shit is this? Yeah. Uh, because that was, it's funny, of all the, the Star Trek series, the DC one is the only one I ever followed every single issue, because it was set in movie era TOS. I just absolutely loved it. So, anyway, that's how I know who Wild Dog is. Yeah. Now I will shut up. <laughs> The Wild Dog's kind of like Punisher, right? He wears a jersey, he's got a hockey mask. Yeah, yeah a different yeah. type of character, yeah. yeah. We all know why I, why I watch Arrow, so we don't yes, even we need do. to get into it. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. There's um, one reason only. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, American Ninja Warrior. Yeah, he was mm -hmm. awesome. Right, right, right. To watch it, watch it. Um, but yeah, you so mean I'm, Mr. Goodman. That's 
<laughs> he's gonna take. He's gonna take your name like uh, like uh, Jack White. Damn White straight. Red. He's going yeah. to. The only way you can do it. Yeah. So I, I, I was I was happy with that. Supergirl. So so. That show yeah. is kind of an interesting spot. Uh, but really, um, the thing I want to talk about uh, really quick was Marvel Heroes, um, the multiplayer uh, action RPG game. That just it's been on beta on um, PS4. It's called Omega, and it's coming to Xbox in I think June twentieth is when it comes out. This game's a lot of fun, and I think is it? oh it is it is I think it's well worth it. It's got online play. You can play with your friends, voice chat, and all that fun stuff. Um, you can play basically a million different. You play as the Marvel heroes versus the DC online game where you make up your own hero and you'll play yeah. with those heroes. I think yeah. this is much easier to get into it's a lot of fun there's cool loot and upgrades it's free to play too yeah. so um bobby i think you'll get a kick out of this game it's it's really cool it's not dc characters but dc yeah. can easily do something like this yeah yeah, yeah. but it's fun i really I enjoy it, it a lot uh sean church in our group is playing this he's like the level like 60 already he's just really fully engaged in it and charlie they play with all of the marvel heroes it's not just you know Ooh. not the mcu but it's all of the you know x-men and all the 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 areas um they go through like uh like my old marvel avengers alliance game i mean i i i killed at that and i yeah. was sad when it went away yeah this is more like uh, marvel ultimate alliance if you think of that game yeah so it's yeah. fun you can play with multiple people um you know they play with all the different variances of all the characters and it's a lot of fun i i really thought it was and i could see it's it's probably gonna be a game though i'd want to play with with people because it is kind of a little grindy you know like diablo is where punch 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 get gear yeah. loot and things like that and they do you and you get it you grind enough you can get the characters what they do is though if you really want to buy the characters you don't have the time you can go ahead and buy them with the real money so I love it. It's uh, it's free right now on beta on PS4. Charlie, when it's out in June, you do need Xbox Gold, so no, yeah, we're gonna see, go back there. Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna go. It's just wasted money because Nathaniel doesn't play That's true. games anymore. That's true. So it's just it's just not worth it, unfortunately. Okay. Well, yeah. So uh, anybody out there that you want to play, uh, you can catch me on PS4. I'm LWH1993, which. Damn you, Shuhei, let me change my idea. I hate that one. I've had it for years. <laughs> yeah. It's horrible. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, well, I think that wraps up the Geek Easy this week. I think it's time to now get into the Thunderdome and talk about Wonder Woman. Get ready for spoilers. We've entered the Thunderdome to talk about Wonder Woman. Uh, we will have spoilers, so if you have not seen this movie, definitely go see it, then come back and listen. And uh, uh, you know, yes, yes, yes. and then if you don't agree with anything we say, feel free to tweet back and let us know how disgusted you are with our opinions. Uh, oh, no, not see. me. Don't don't do that to me because I'll tell you you're an idiot. Okay. Yeah. Usually, if someone wants to tweet back their opinion, I just say tweet back to the uh, hashtag Kiss My Ass. Uh, keep on, hashtag keep on trucking. So go on. So go on. Yes. So uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, this is really uh, I want to call it the first female-led superhero movie because we have Catwoman and uh, ah! unfortunately <laughs> bad, bad company on both companies. Yeah. Uh, parts. Hey Bobby. Hey Bobby. Why don't you give us a defense of Catwoman? Go. There first. is no defense. And Charlie, is no defense. You, and Charlie, you defend Electra. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> No way, no how. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so this movie actually just got a uh, heads up that it is now officially is the highest grossing female directed movie ever. Do you have a moment of a pause for that? Seriously? I'm doing it. Can't you hear? <laughs> is, the resident, is the resident estrogen zap of the group here? That's $101,505,000 estimate. Uh, final numbers, as we, as we all know, because we're we're movie trackers, will be tomorrow evening. Yeah. Um, but yeah, could could it, which means it'll generally go up or go down. It'll generally shrink by a tiny amount. And this is only domestic, correct? Correct. Correct. So it'll probably it, it's going to get three five hundred million by the time it's done. I think. Yeah. Oh, easily. Yeah. It's not yeah. getting that Lebanon m money because apparently they don't like Jewish people. 
Uh, whatever. If they're it's... taking fuck themselves. Pardon my language. <laughs> oh my wow. Goodness. I was going to say, <laughs> since, since, since they gave us lesbianism, I think they'd be fine with it. But whatever. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, but as a woman and a Jew, they can kiss my ass. Yes, yes, yes. We don't, we don't appreciate that behavior uh, on their yes. part. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so the spoiler cast, we're just going to go through everybody's takes. We want your pros, your cons. At the end, give us you know your 1 out of 10 review. And then if you have any thoughts of, you know, what's next uh you know what you think this character is going to bring to the larger dcu let us know um i do want to say that there was no stinger for this movie which is kind of kind of uh i think was a the right pick because i think it was a movie that did not need to be connected to everything else so yes yes we won't be talking about a stinger at the end so uh with that lisa oh i get to go first estrogen zap Estrogen zap. Well, <laughs> you know I'm going to have all kinds of good stuff to say about this. Yes. Um, I will preface this by saying, because I've mentioned it in the past, I'm a bit of a Wonder Woman historian. I love her. Um, she has always been one of my favorite things. I know a lot about her origins and her history. So, of course, I look at it with a little bit of a critical eye in that regard. Um, I've also been fairly vocal, as Todd will attest, to the fact that I didn't think Gal Gadot was necessarily the best casting for what? her. <laughs> um, but that, you know, before I saw the movie, I'm, I'm being fair. Uh, not so much that I don't think she's beautiful or talented, because I think she's both. But from a physical standpoint, you know, Wonder Woman is a little bit more of a force to be reckoned with. So that bothered me a little bit. Um, what else? You know, I have a long history of not liking DC's movies which Todd also will point out, and Charlie's nodding along as well. So going into this movie, you know, it was not set up, to, even before the reviews and stuff started coming out, it was not set up in my mind necessarily to be successful, right? We can, we yeah. can all oh, yeah. agree with oh. that. But I was cautiously optimistic and hopeful, and then, you know, all the buzz started happening, and I felt a little more hopeful. So when I saw it, you know, and I saw it Thursday night with my usual crew of the besties with testes, as we call them, um, I was, I don't want to say I was blown away because I do have some nitpicky things, but I was very pleased. It was leaps and bounds better than any of the other DC movies. Oh, wow. um, I was not disappointed, which was a really good feeling, especially coming out of the fact that now we had DC tackling like my favorite character and... I just was so ready to have my hair broken, and I didn't. And, uh, you know, I thought that Gal Gadot did a wonderful job. I still think that they needed someone who was maybe a little stronger looking, but she was phenomenal. I mean, she really pulled it off. She could not have been more charming and lovely and more embodying of the character. I thought Chris Pine was perfect. You know, he restrained himself as Captain Kirk as he was in this movie, <laughs> he really made a point, and I assume it's, you know, good direction on the director's part, he never took center stage. You know, he was always kind of the just bubbling below the surface. He really restrained it to a point where she was the focus of the movie. Yeah. And I got choked up at points, not so much because it was so touching, but to see, especially as a woman, and, you know, I get that I'm the only girl here, but to see as a woman this portrayal of these women on the island in the beginning who are just completely unabashedly warriors and badasses and no punches pulled and completely self-sufficient and, you know, they didn't veer into feminism as man-hating, ever. You know, there was no mm -hmm. men suck, we don't need them. It was just, right. we got our shit handled. And seeing little Diana, the little girl playing her, you know, wanting oh. to be fierce, my heart was like. I was my very, throat. I was very much in love with that little girl. So to how speak. long <laughs> have, how long have women, geeks or otherwise, waited for a movie where it was not, you know, kick-ass female like Black Widow, who's part of a team of men, or kick-ass woman who has her moment, but the rest of the movie she's chasing a love interest, or any other of the typical tropes you see. So it was amazing just to have somebody be the linchpin of this movie. And, you know, I'm so glad that it got made. Um, I almost feel like I love this movie despite its flaws. And I do think it had some. But um, 
they weren't on a line with my gripes about other movies that DC puts out. Um, and I'll get into that in a second. But again, so important that this got made. So important that it got made by the people it got made by, directed by the director who directed it. And the fact that I felt like the meddling from the studio was kept to a minimum. There was some, certainly, but they pulled it off. And um, my only real problems, if we're going to get into that, is one of the major bones I have to pick with all of these movies, and this is true of Man of Steel, this is true of Batman vs. Superman, um, for me, especially this movie, and this movie was almost more of a problem for me than some of the others because it was so strong up until that magical three quarters of the way through that DC movies tend to have, you know, an issue with. Not only that, but some of the CGI, like, um, let me backpedal. The scene where she's in the No Man's Land, that was one of the best scenes in the whole movie, right? Where she's mm -hmm. deflecting bullets and clearing the path for everybody and then into the village and everything else. Phenomenal. Some of the other scenes, and in particular when she was fighting Ares, um, the CGI and the way that they do these over-the-top action sequences are so overblown that it pulls me out of the story. You know, I feel like if they just exercised a little bit of restraint, I get that they're trying to be, you know, this comic book world where the laws of reality don't apply. But when you're going from the page to live action, I think you need to exercise a little bit of restraint because some of the CGI was really bad to me, to my eyes. Um, some of the fight scenes, in particular when she was fighting Ares, and him like doing his pulling all the metal around to make his armor and everything else were so overblown that it kind of made me disconnect. You know, I just felt like all of a sudden they threw this fan service, ridiculous special effects, how many special effects can we cram into this scene part into an otherwise great movie. And that's always been my issue with these movies. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people, it was real polarizing. Either you saw that twist coming or you didn't at all. One or the other. There was no, mm, this is going to turn a certain way. I don't think the guy, what's his name, Remus Lupin from Harry Potter uh -huh. who played Harry. Yeah. I don't David, think David Thewlis is his yes. name. David Thewlis. I don't think Very he's good weird. casting. I mean, especially if you're a Harry Potter fan. He's like a guy you know and love. He's like a sweetheart. So... He did. He was not a good big bad for me, at all. I think he was probably cast more for the twist yeah. than anything. Because yeah. you didn't see him. Yes. But it My didn't goodness. work yeah. for me. For me, it didn't work. Oh. Yeah. Um, you know, I loved it. I again, none of this stuff tarnished it to the point where I would say it was a bad movie by any means. I thought it was great. I think it gave me a lot of hope that maybe they can go in a better direction. Again, leaps and bounds over anything they've done, and not just because it was Wonder Woman and I love her. Um. I had a ton of heart, but again, great story, great movie, tarnished by the fact that they just always need to do all this whiz-bang bullshit that makes me crazy. You know, make your fight scenes dial down 20% and your movies would be fantastic. Not Batman vs. Superman, because that movie just sucked. <laughs> so, well, I, I can at least speak. It's not even a good movie. It has nothing to do with the action sequences. Yeah, I, I can at least horrible speak story, to horrible dialogue. The battle, Lisa. This is a. This is actually part of the source material. This. This actually is a recent uh, transition that happened because Wonder Woman has such weird origins. Like at one time, she was supposed to be formed from clay. That was an origin for she had for a long time. And then the most recent one was that she indeed was Zeus's daughter. With um, her mo with the mother, and there was a big battle in the in the New Fifty Two, and one of the best runs that Wonder Woman had, which was, was against Ares. And you have gods fighting, so I don't know how you make gods fighting grounded, because that's truly what it is. I mean, more from an effect standpoint, it's not that I think that they couldn't make it over the top in the sense that yes, it's two gods fighting. I get that, but almost from an art direction standpoint, it's too much. Yeah, too much fire, too many lifting vehicles. Too many floating up into the air in a godlike Jesus Christ pose. Um, just too much. And I get that they're gods. I get that. You can convey that kind of power without shoving it down my throat. Yeah. And I don't know if there's a great director who's done that, because, you know, you have Joss Whedon who's done, you know, the gods among men fighting. Uh, Patty Jenkins, I mean, her, she is most famous. Yeah, I feel like that was yeah. the disconnect. I yeah. don't feel that was her. That was the studio saying this has to fit our mold. 
Or gotta have a, I feel, gotta like, have a blowout. I feel like the majority of the movie, like 80% of the movie, was completely hers and completely molded and guided by her. And that was just the studio saying, okay, now we got to shoehorn in the regular formulaic stuff that we mm. have to do to make this a superhero I, yeah. movie. I can see and that. I can see that. It broke my heart a little only because, again, I was so invested in this movie and in the story, and then I get pulled out by that. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I sit there and I go, ugh, this again, you know? But, but honestly, um, there was no th- a threat in the movie, unfortunately, before then, that she, she could handle easily. She, the, nobody was a threat true. to her. And if you didn't have that, you kind of felt like she's a goddess and she's playing it. You kind of felt like, how do you show that she is a force to be reckoned with? I mean, she when she picked up that tank, holy crap, I'm like, shit, oh my god. That, that's the yeah. thing, leading like, up to that point. They did it once like, and then they kept doing it. Yeah, but th- leading up to that point, I felt like she's she's a strong fighter. But I didn't feel like she was that much above anybody else. She was fast. She could block stuff, all that. When she got into that fight, it was the first time in the whole movie I thought, okay, what does she have left in the tank? And when she started meeting him blow for blow, I was like, oh, this is... For me, I started freaking out because I was like, this is awesome for me. I was like, this is amazing to see her step up against him and just beat his ass. I was loving it. And I think that may be... Like that might be they're they're trying to answer to to the guys that are going to the movie and try to make it like that kind of coolness. I don't know, but it was for me watching all that. I was like, yes, I loved it. I thought it was a great fight at the end, and that's but that's just I'm into that shit. So <laughs> I get what you're saying, but you know what? Honestly, no part of this movie should be made for men. I don't mean it that you can't enjoy it, but that should not have been a consideration. Do you know no. what I'm saying? This is a movie that women deserve to have made for them. And I'm not saying that men shouldn't enjoy it, but it shouldn't be crafted to appeal to them. That I, shouldn't be, that, I, that focus and research, you know, don't look at it as a focus group. Well, how can we get men to like this movie? Shouldn't even be a question. Because every movie that we get that's a superhero movie is made for men. So, I won't agree with you there. But, um, again, I can't harp enough on how important this movie is to take kids to go see. And I don't just mean daughters. You know, my son loved it, and I... I can't tell you what it feels like, especially as a single mom, to have my 14-year-old son say, wow, she's totally a badass, and not have any disconnect between her badassery and the badassery of any other superhero and any of the other Marvel movies we've seen. But don't you feel like, to go back to your saying it shouldn't cater to men, I feel like it has to because of the fact of you want men to recognize that she is badass, that she can go toe-to-toe with Superman and Batman, because... Ultimately, she's going to team with all these guys. And if she's the weak link in their minds, it doesn't work. And I think if she's just as strong and just as powerful as them, now going into Justice League, they're going to walk away and go, holy crap. It's the same thing like when at the end of Batman for Superman, I felt like when I walked away, I was like, she's the fucking badass. Batman and Superman are just eh. But like she crushed it in that. So watching this all portray and take suit like for me that's what i feel like they're trying when i say that they're trying to make it for men i feel like they're trying to go okay here's a woman among the men she's got to be able to be up to par with them or it's not believable in guys eyes i'm not saying that's right or wrong i'm not saying that's right or wrong but i'm just saying that might be where the studio is coming from and then they push it and that's why you have the big blowout scene at the end because ultimately it is an action movie and they're trying to still, you know, they have to sell to everybody. They can't just sell to one side, you know. At least that's the way I, I take it anyway. Well, because, yeah, you're you're basically saying that they need her to be on par with the men. So you're saying she has to work 20 to 30 percent harder or be shown 20 no, to 30 I'm not saying that. harder than what a man can do no, for a no. man to believe she's as bad as hell. I no, I'm not saying no, that. It just has to be, a, a woman shouldn't be underestimated. And just saying that she doesn't do it harder. She just has to be at the level where we go, yeah, she's, she's at the level she meant. Nobody, Superman never says, I have to work 80% less to be the level woman. I mean, yeah. it never, it never I got that. So I think that just tends to be, you know, maybe an overreaction to say. And, and I think the other thing is, an over-the-top battle scene doesn't have to be just for men. I mean, women can enjoy that, too. To say women don't enjoy that is kind of... And we do. That's the whole learning from this movie. And by the way, Charlie is sitting there and totally gets me. I can see by the look on his face. <laughs> well, Charlie, I mean, just, I, I, Charlie just knows nothing well, I, to go into the For once, Charlie and I are on the same page. I feel your passion. And I 
think I'm that, fired up. I've been fired up since no, I saw the movie. I, and you I know, think, I think that any type of entertainment has to, if it can speak to you. I say this all the time. If it speaks to you, that pleases yeah. me. I'm a believer in all fandom touching people and however it, it it speaks to them. So if this speaks to you in the way, it, if this is a part that you like and this is a part that you think is terrible, I believe in you and I believe in what you're saying. <laughs> no, and I and I and I'm kind of the and I'm kind of the yeah. I, you're right. The thing, the thing that I, I disliked about Supergirl, the TV show that they came on and toned it down real fast, was women are better than men. Blah 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 blah. And you're right. This movie had none of that. This movie was these women yeah. are badass. Doesn't have anything to do with men. There's no men on this island. We don't give a shit. We don't need them. You know what well, I mean? Well, even between her and Steve, you know, the love interest part of it was such a tiny piece yep. right. and very subtle. Yeah, and never really had to go anywhere. You know, he's dead, so it's not an issue. But that was never her motivation, right? In the movie, no. no. And and I think part of the thing was that she was. And I'll I mean, she was ready little... to ditch him. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, I'll give it a little bit of pass though, because she was also just learning she was a goddess. So she, quite honestly, yeah. she didn't know what she was capable of because her. She, before that point, she just thought she was an Am- you know she came to Themyscira and was just an Amazon. So the fact is that she's much more than that. Has this yeah. th- these powers that are at the level of you know Ares, the god, and didn't know how to fight against him until she gained those powers. I think that, I think I think the yeah I mean typically these battles are over the top and and that's a problem with most superhero films. It just gets to be the last third is always hard to pull off because you just get the inevitable big battle. But yep. the, yeah, but. Yeah, I thought. I mean, I thought it was okay. But yeah. you know what was not in this that has been in every. And it's funny. I love the uh, the Don't YouTube say a portal. channel. No, no, no. I was gonna say. I'm gonna say a portal because I love this yeah. YouTube channel, the Honest Trailers, and they mm-hmm. always say big blue sky hole. We didn't have one. There was no big blue That's sky true. hole. That's true. I was very happy about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I need to point out too, the thing that this movie got right that the other DC movies have not gotten right for me either. The dialogue was so much better. Yeah. I don't oh know yes. if that was Patty Jenkins yeah. or, you know what, the script writers, the, I don't know. They got rid of David Goyer. That was oh, a big God. part. Oh, yeah. 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 Much more natural. Yeah. I liked her feistiness. You know, the back and yeah. forth. The, the scene on the boat where they were, like, going to go to sleep was one of the funniest things. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the dialogue was much better. It wasn't, like, I didn't feel like it was shoehorned in. I have enjoyed the DC movies so far, and I liked Man of Steel. And the one thing I liked about Man of Steel that I continue to like with this movie is DC, this is DC's second origin story in theory of their big superheroes and they did it different than every other origin story where it's not you know I liked how they did the flashbacks in Man of Steel you know where he's already Superman or Clark Kent or whatever full grown and he's thinking back to things in the past I liked how this started off and it was you know, a letter from Bruce Wayne to her, wanting to know about his, her past, which just draws up memories, and she starts to think about the past, and you start to take along to her origin story. I loved all that. I like how they, they're handling the origin stories, and it's not just the same stuff we've seen for years, boring, you know, canned, fed to us. So that part I really enjoyed, and I felt like it was done very well. I didn't really take away much that I didn't like about it, and for me personally, like, Honestly, Wonder Woman is the weakest link for me in terms of like my DC comic book stuff. Not Take it in terms easy, of her Lisa. strength. Take it not, easy. not in terms of her strength. I mean, in terms of my reading, I never, I don't know her character that well. I didn't follow her growing up that well. I mainly only followed Superman, Batman. The only time I read Wonder Woman was when she crossed over to those books or in Justice League. Um, but that's not saying much because I didn't read a lot of The Flash growing up. I didn't read a lot of Aquaman growing up and all that stuff or Green Lantern or any of them. Batman and Superman were my, my one two that I bought every week or every month religiously and, and owned them all and read them all. And so one of was kind of like I walking into this, I went in blinded, not really knowing the origins and didn't have to have that tied to me to be like, well, they got to hit this beat and they got to hit this part and they got to hit this part. So I felt kind of free going into this movie as opposed to Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman or any of the Nolan Batman movies and stuff. It kind of felt refreshing to just walk in and not know what I was walking into. Like, even Suicide Squad, I kind of had a feel for what I was getting when I walked in. Wonder Woman, I had no idea where the direction was. It blew me away. I fell in love with her 
wholeheartedly, man. Like, I'm like, I walk out of the theater and I'm like, I'm a fool. I need to go back and read this stuff and go find out, like, more about this character. Like, I thought she was amazing. I thought Gal Gadot pulled it off, like, crushed it. Like, that bat, that that whole fighting scene when she starts fighting, it reminded me of Batman going into the warehouse and Batman v Superman, like just wrecking shit. And I that loved could, could it. Could be the, the very best part of that film. Batman I shit. yeah, and I loved how she just was like crushing everybody, and like all the men are want, not wanting to like go through, and she's like, no, I'm going. Like you stay here, I'm going, and I'm saving people. Like these people need us, I'm going, and. That was just awesome to see. Like, that to me is when the movie shifted in terms of, like, it was good up to that point, but that's when I was like, okay, here we go. This is the stuff that I want to see. I want to see her just beating people up and really showing her powers and what she can do. So I loved all of the movie. There wasn't anything that really I walked away and I was just like, that was weak or anything. It got me emotional. Um, it got me to the point where I'll be honest, I, I almost started to cry in the theater. I was just like, whoa, what the heck is going on here? Like, this, this isn't normal for a superhero movie where I'm like getting tear jerked. And, and, you know, her, like, I liked how they played the whole Steve before he jumps on the plane and he's talking to her and you can't really hear what's going on. And then it plays back at the end when she just, boom. And it's reminiscent to when, um, her aunt. You know, when, when they're on the thing and her aunt and her fighting the first time the bracelets come out and she realizes what it is and what they can do. It's just, I thought that, I, I love the movie. I thought it was phenomenal, honestly. So that's my take. Awesome. Hot take! Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, this is like the best, uh, kind of both worlds, uh, the best World War One action movie we've ever had. Yep. If you think about it, World War Two. There's a lot of great World War Two movies, um, but World War One, seeing the trench warfare um, mm. in a very much uh, modern way, was really entertaining. Um, mm -hmm. This was a lot like you combined Thor and Captain America together. Those type movies where you've got a mm -hmm. right. fantasy piece with family, and then you've got that man out of time uh, or woman out of time element as well. Um, the the Women, uh, Wonder Woman had a lot of, uh, w which I like what Gal Gadot did. She was a she was a person that was out of her element in in the the modern world. She was yeah. seeing through through th seeing things through her eyes was just fun. Like you know, even like some of the the, the um, takes on I guess you would call it um, the woman's movement. Also, then when the uh, the one member of her uh, ragtag team basically said, "I wanted to be an actor, but I couldn't because of the color of my skin." They touched on some things that yeah. apparently she, w you know, obviously she would never experience. So it was great how they took all of those pieces and, and I think told some very important things. Um, I liked the action; I thought it was really well done. Patty Jenkins uh, directed Monster. Um, that was a very acclaimed movie, but very grounded in reality. Holly, Holly mm -hmm. Berry won an Oscar for that. And then she's predominantly been doing just TV stuff, and she did Game of Thrones. So you can kind of see where that work on TV, especially like a show like Game of Thrones, really paid through. Now that's where I think maybe the CGI over-the-top scene, Lisa, maybe is... She may just not have been as used to, in her cinematographer, doing a scene like that where it's pr predominantly CGI, where it's like, that's hard for anybody to do, because... It's hard to make that, and I don't know what the best movie that's done that over the top, you know, guy in a green screen suit that's made it really compelling and things like that. But I, th I thought it was better than Suicide Squad, uh, better than a lot of the movies that came out, you know, better than Iron Man 1 or versus the Iron Monger. There's been right. a lot of ways where. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, you thought Danny Houston was the bad guy for the majority right. of the movie. Yep, yep, and they brought yep, yep. in, uh, you know, the, the switcheroo with Ares. I was fine with that. Mm -hmm. Not a big deal. But um, ultimately, um, I, I thought the movie was probably a little too long. I, when I came in the movie, it was 9.30. Uh, it was, uh, went to the 7 o'clock, it was 9.30. So there were some times where I felt like they could have, like, picked up the pace a little bit. I mean, they did some important things in the quiet moments of the movie. Um, so, I mean, that... I can understand that. One of the things I just did not love was the Steve's group of guys he had to have. Hmm. I didn't think they were that great. I kind of felt like it was the Howling Commandos, but none of them really felt that cool or great at what they did. Why were they essential? Yeah. Uh, you know, Chief, I thought he was kind of interesting, but not a great actor. 
I can kind of tell he was not a great actor. The way he, he just kind of took the moments. Uh, I liked the the uh, the guy who was more like the actor, the the master of language. He was he was cool. I liked him. And the Sammy? guy, yeah, Sammy. And then the guy that was this sharpshooter, kind of comedic. Spud. Yeah, Spud, Spud from Brain yeah. Spotting. But I kind of felt like yeah, he did not show his talents. Why he was necessary? Right. They showed why he. He couldn't make the shot, but it was kind of like before you think you, they would have shown him being very talented at what he did, and then the moment of war got to him, and then he lost his edge. So a little bit dicey with that. Um, I did love the fact that they introduced this movie from the very beginning with modern times and her looking back. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I like that. It kind of yeah. bridged the two, and that was all you needed to bring in the DCU to this movie. You did not need yeah. a stinger. You didn't have to be to yep. be continued. And I, I yeah. like that. I think we've gotten too much of these movies have always got to bring in what's next, what's next, yeah. what's next, and they barely right. can stand on their own. They just become a, you know, to be continued. Piece of pu a piece in the uh, p uh, puzzle piece. Yeah. 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 So ultimately, really happy with the movie. My wife is so excited after seeing this movie. Um, I, I think it's, to Lisa's point, it's a very important movie. And I think... Wonder Woman is finally getting her due, and I hope people like to your point, Bobby, search out stories with Wonder Woman. They, yeah. the, it, mm -hmm. I mean, we talk about Batman having Batman sixty six ruining that character. Wonder mm -hmm. Woman seventy seven, I think, was the, the oh, Linda. I mean, it's anyway. fun, but it's so campy. It's kind of like it's hard to make that you know impactful for today. So this is important and. If you need recommendations on some great Wonder Woman stories, let us know. I've got some good options for you. Yeah, I would. I would like that because I definitely. It definitely made me go. I need to go back and I need to just find out about this character. You know, and I'm I'm through the roof for her now. Like really, it, I think they did a great job with her on screen. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Charlie, you're batting. Oh up. man, I I love going last because all the good stuff has been said. <laughs> <laughs> But um, big fan, very big fan, and it's funny. My 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 uh, the things that detract you from this will be kind of small and and not very significant. But uh, having a single focused story, April and I were talking about this was very refreshing. We weren't trying to pick up a piece that ties to the next movie and blah 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 blah. There's one story going on. We saw it from start to end. There didn't have to be weird wrinkles in it or, or, or throwbacks or throw forwards, and, and that was nice. Because you don't get that in, you know, and I'll knock on the Marvel films for that. They aren't always trying to push you to the next, you know, stop sign. Um, so it was, it was nice to have that. Her, you know, her emotional journey from the scrappy young little girl through the petulant teen, through the, you know what, hey, but, you know, uh, people can die. You know, look, my, my, my aunt got killed by this mysterious weapon. You know, I, you know, this is now very real for me. So there's war. I've got to end it. She has this, you know, she, she goes out into the real world, our, our world, with this simplistic view of, I'll kill Ares, and it'll make the war stop. And she's very focused. And I love that focus and how she doesn't let anything get in the way. She doesn't let a man get in the way because she doesn't know what the hell men are. So why would she kowtow to one? That is amazing, Lisa, much to your point. It's important that she has her mission, she has her focus, and she follows through. Um, love story, like you said, tiny little wrinkle. Didn't overwhelm. Didn't come. Did, wasn't anything that got in the way of her doing what she had to do when he made that ultimate sacrifice. I mean, he's the Steve who didn't have his shit figured out because Steve Rogers, Captain America, somehow managed to live by flying a plane into the blue yonder. So, oh well. He didn't blow himself up with a bunch of poison gas. Um, didn't see the twist coming. I was like, what? No, it couldn't be Lupin. Damn! Um, so that was cool. So I, 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 enjoyed, I enjoyed being surprised. Um, my cons to it beyond that was that in a very packed theater at you know eight thirty on preview night, um, with, with the, the the little funny ha has that got you know the the big scenes for that the the boat and some of the stuff in London, I miss bits and pieces because people were howling and laughing. So it was it was it, it was kind of a poor theater experience. Also, and this was kind of weird. And and I saw I saw RV or Ron Van Timmer at Celebration Cinemas the next day in the elevator at work, and I was chatting with him about this. They started the movie. Right at eight thirty, skipped the previews. We watched it for about seven to ten minutes, and they turned it off. And a what? guy walked in and said, "No, I, I swear to God, they paused it like they like they would pause your screen on TV." And one of the little theater rats comes out and says, um, "Theater rats, you know, 
you know what? We turned it on too early. We saw people going in. We're just going to start it over. What? So that, uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. God. That's and horrible. then to, And then to encapsulate that, my wife was sitting, she's sitting between me and the theater rat because we're in row two. And he was <laughs> over to the right. April goes, seriously? And this guy, you want to talk about this was going to be nuclear disaster, says, I'm sorry, ma'am. Can I help you with something? <laughs> oh, my God. Less needs to be said about that, the better. So they started the movie again. So talk about being pulled out of the experience. Oh, it was it was a very rare. I don't want to knock on the Celebration Cinema folks because I love the place. I do business with these people, or my company does business with these people, and I get involved at, at different events at the theater. But you know, th there's going to be stumbles sometimes. And this just happened to be one kind of detracted from my enjoyment of the experience. But what's funny is that I got an audience with one of the uh, one of the officers of the company the next day to get to share my feedback with him. So. Um, that was weird. That kind of stuff happens from time to time. Um, fortunately, it didn't have anything to do with with actually enjoying the plot of the film because I thought I thought it was was pretty terrific. So that was it. You guys got to say all the important stuff, and I just got to babble for a couple. No, minutes. good <laughs> points, Charlie. Work, like that works works for me. Okay, guys, really quick. Uh, what is your final score, Lisa? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Okay, yeah. Bobby Pauls. Um, I would go. I go nine on it for me. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I'd probably do an eight point five. I really liked it. Um, yeah, some some minor uh, things, but I think it did the best job of bringing that character to life. Uh, Charlie, nine point two. <laughs> <laughs> it just has to be difficult. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Like, apparently, yeah. we're in a hundred point scale, so Charlie's got to head the two. <laughs> <laughs> Better than Bobby. Sorry, Bobby. That's yep. fine. That's I out, fine. I, I out would you on this one. That's fine, because you know what? You're the Marvel guy, so if you're that hyped on it, I'm happy about yeah. that. That means good things. Yeah, Bobby, you, you didn't it. have you to uh, defend your honor. Uh, I know, Charlie imagine that. I just, oh that just showed up. That was exactly. good. Well, but you know what? Don't get too hopeful. Wait till we get to Justice League. You That's don't true. know. Oh, just <laughs> stop. Okay, well, that takes us out of the Thunderdome. Bobby, tell us where yes. we can find you. Uh, you can follow me Instagram, Twitter, at Nintendo Gurus. Um, I have three podcasts now. Um, I have If We Ran Nintendo that I do with Sean Capri. I have a new show called The Hosts um, that I would love to get you guys on eventually at some point. Um, I bring two different hosts in every week. We don't talk about politics or religion. Everything else is on the table. Each host brings a topic to the table, and we just chat and have a good time with it. Um, Star, the Star Trek! Yes. <laughs> Charlie will not be on an episode, trust me. Oh! <laughs> Just kidding, Charlie. Um, and then the Geek Cast. So we, we teased that a little bit in the beginning, and me and Toby have been going for 100 episodes. We just reached 100 yesterday. We ended it, Todd. What? It's done. It's over. Geek Cast is over. It's what? no more. Um, that was the, uh, the end result. We are now starting a new podcast okay. called the Nintendo playstation podcast ah. so we have a new format it's going to be totally fresh totally new um we are keeping geek outs because everybody that we spoke to screamed at us it was like you got to keep that so we will do still do geek outs and then um i'll bring a nintendo topic he'll bring a playstation topic and then we also have a new segment we're going to do and then we also have um retro games that we're going to talk about and stuff so it's it's kind of a different thing we're going to do next week will be it's actually live now Subscribe now to the show, and um, next week we will have the very first episode. We have like a uh, episode zero up now, where we kind of explain what's going on at this point on that one. So a little different, a little different. We and you know the funny thing is, all the people that were telling us what we should do, we talked about all that stuff. We <laughs> talked about bringing Sean on and making it, the gaming gurus, and like we'd have all three and like all these different things that you guys were throwing at us. We talked about it and it was like, let's do this, let's do that, and then it, we've been talking about it for like. Two months now, which what we should do, and uh, last week we kind of finalized everything, so it's good. Well, Bobby, what I think you should do is <laughs> you should not be you should only be allowed to talk about Sony. Toby can only talk about well, Nintendo. The funny thing is, is like that's what we're gonna do. Is the one segment we're gonna do the news. Yep. I bring three news topics. He brings three news topics, and then I pick the Sony one that I want to hear about, and he picks the Nintendo oh, one okay. that I want to hear about. So we're gonna try to do things a little. A little different on that side, so awesome. That's it. That's well, it. I'll tell you this: 
pleasure to have you on, Bobby. Thank you very much. If you, you guys join uh, the Geek Guru uh, group, uh, uh, sorry, the Nintendo Guru group, I'm still getting yeah. over that. It's uh, fine, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great group on uh, Facebook about, uh, really focused on Nintendo, but video games and such. Um, it's yeah. a lot of fun, and Bobby does an awesome job. Uh, you know, you work with some great people, and you've got a lot of great Thank networks, you. so I really love it. It's one of my favorite. I love listening to your podcast, and I love screaming back and realizing, <laughs> hey, you can't hear me. Damn it. Oh, well. We'll get you on so you can scream in live. How about that? That'll work. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that takes us out. Check out Bobby. But Charlie, tell them all about how they can reach us. Now I got to do my thing, friends. Thanks, as always, for joining us. We are uh, the Amazon Princess Warrior Contingent of the Secret Friends uh, Facebook community and podcast page. Find us over on Twitter, at Secret Friends U. Uh, pop us off a note to the mailbag, SecretFriendsUnite at gmail.com. Tell us what you think. Give us your uh, your review of Wonder Woman, and we will read it live on the podcast. Todd, I'm still waiting for that. Maybe it'll catch on. You never can tell. Also, uh, visit our Secret Friends Unite YouTube page to see our mugs in your face. Once again, thank you very much. I'm going to tell you that sharing is caring, and to keep on trucking. Be the hero, not the villain. Be the villain, because it's far more fun. Aww. <laughs> I'm evil, you know that. Secret friends, unite!